This is the June 2020 copy of Consumer Reports, and this signifies that the alarm has been sounded. Microplastics are the hidden danger to your health and the health of every living creature on Earth. The research presented in this segment is of critical importance. We will examine what microplastics are, how they get into your food supply, and what you can do to protect the health of you and your family. This is extremely important to expectant mothers. And those of you who are planning a family, research indicates consumed microplastics can even be transferred to an unborn fetus. Please stay with us to the end of this segment, and we will offer products that can minimize exposure to microplastics in your home and in your body. Share this information with all of your family and anyone you know in the healthcare field. This topic is that important. And now, microplastics, the hidden danger to your health. It is said we eat one credit card of plastic a week. I'm going to get a month serving in one setting. Good morning, Jim. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing fine, Justin. We've got a... I think a very informative show, and we talked about we wanted to bring something to the public or something to the attention of the public that affects every living thing on earth. And the deeper you dive, the more terrifying it becomes. That is true. So it doesn't matter your political party, your sex, whatever you believe, this is something human or animal it impacts <laughs> your life from earthworms to eagles. Yep. And it is terrifying when you get into it. As you know, I've been into the, quote, water business, owned a water purification company, worked for a plumbing company. And I said our next crisis will be water. And I thought would be the availability yes. or no availability or very little Just availability water as a commodity. of water as a commodity or the pollution of it. But this is a whole new type of pollution. It's called microplastics. As you can see by the June issue of Consumer Report, it's now coming to the forefront, and we want to bring a lot of information we found over the next couple of years because it is so encompassing. And it seems like every time someone does a study, they find out how how much is affected. They found it on the bottom of the deepest parts of the ocean. Um, we have infected plastic we found it in plankton, and we will show some videos yes. we have. So this is a very, very important subject. Please click on subscribe, click on like, and tell your friends about this. Everyone should hear it. And for those that don't, that have heard the word microplastic but don't fully understand, yeah. uh, it is a broad definition. Uh, are there any piece of plastic that is smaller than five millimeters in size? Uh, that can be man-made or just from breakdown. Yeah. Um, we have a primary microplastics, and those are the ones that are actually manufactured to be small microplastics. You can think plastic beads, uh, glitter, uh, they have um, any types of cosmetics, toothpaste, face washes. Uh, there was bar the ban, soap. bar soap. If yeah. it has any abrasives in it, mm -hmm. those are primary microplastics, and those were actually engineered to be tiny plastics. Uh, the secondary microplastics, which seem to be the primary in some form, was banned a few years ago from cosmetics in the United States, from the body washes. Uh, but the secondary microplastics are a whole nother world of trouble. And that comes from just a breakdown of larger pieces of plastic. Uh, if you've ever let something sit outside that's plastic for too long, it starts discoloring, gets hard. That's the kind of breakdown that occurs. But in the ocean with the waves and the sun, it just breaks into smaller and smaller fragments. And those fragments don't go away. They just float around and are eaten by plankton. Uh, they're, they're eaten by fish. Moves right up the shrimp. food chain. 
They're eaten by a lot of things, and they find their way not only in the ocean, but in the air. And we're going to talk about a number of ways that you would never dream that you have microplastics in your body. I can pretty much guarantee everyone listening to this, if they knew how much microplastics was in food, water, and their body, they'd be terrified. Well, in a previous episode we made uh, during the course of Earth Day, we were talking about how I had seen an article about microplastics, but grossly underestimated how much we were actually consuming. I think the statement was four to five credit cards over the course of a year. And in your research, you found something a, a bit more alarming. Apparently, we eat one credit card a week yeah. in microplastics. Now you say, how is that possible? Because if we took in so much, certainly we would feel it. Well, when they're so small, you're going to feel it in a different way. You're going to feel it in your immune system is going to be compromised because those microplastics are made up of materials which contain chemicals. And those chemicals colorants are released into your system. So I think it, it's a huge health issue. And we'll talk about that and deep dive into that. And we also have a statistic on how much microplastics are in your bottled water and the you source think of that micro buying bottled water you would be getting You'd something be safe. pure you yeah but yeah but well I've never felt that because I yeah. in selling water I knew that space at the top of your water bottles will grow bacteria there's no doubt and especially in Florida if you leave a bottle of water in the car overnight or a couple of days and you go to drink it well it becomes its own ecosystem yeah it becomes its own <laughs> ecosystem uh, we'll talk a little bit about this, and then we're going to talk about the type of plastics and how they break down and get into the system. But the, the problem with the water bottle, I think, is a major one. Not only are there microplastics in the water bottle, the off-gassing of the bottles, the plastic bottles we use, adds chemicals to the water, and then when you throw the bottle away, where does it go? Well, you see, I recycle it. Well, the, the ocean's recycling a lot yeah. of it. The beach is recycling a lot of it. So is when you ride down the road. Uh, and most of the stuff in the country is not recycled. I mean, we gave it a go, but we're not doing a very good job of it. But, and here's a, a chart. And we'll put, we'll put all these up on the website so you can see them. We have a lot of information. Nestle Pure Life concentration of the percentage of microplastics in bottled water. It, and this is, is this found a, per liter. Yeah, per liter. Six to ten thousand three hundred and ninety. You know, that and that's the size of it and how much. But when you go down the number of plastic particles in that bottled water is three hundred and ninety. They didn't particles. find a single bottled water company. No. That didn't have well, actually, Nestle and Avion had 0 to 256 or 0 to 74, depending on how lucky you are and which bottle yeah. you grabbed. Obviously, bottled in glass is the way to go, and we'll also talk about that. But you even go to Aquafina, Aqua, and most of the brands we know, they're not good sources. And we are going to talk about it, and we're going to give you solutions. We're not just going to tell you the problem of how you treat your water when it comes out of the faucet what you carry your water in. And there's simple solutions that'll definitely And even in laundry. A lot of people don't think of laundry yeah. as that is a massive contributor. So uh, let's talk about how it does get into the system and the type of things that do. One of the things that opened my eyes, we, uh, we have a whole list here um, of how they get in the system. One of them I did not know, and I thought about it for just the rubber, was automobile tires. Now, you'd say, well, tires, dust. You inhale microplastics. Think about this. The dust that comes off a car tire, 60% of your automobile tires are plastic, 40% are rubber. I didn't know and this. And it makes up 28% of the total distribution of microplastics in the ocean. That's amazing. But if you think the number of cars on the highway, the number of cars that run right by the ocean, yeah. uh, the, a good example is right out here on the street, right by the yeah. ocean. 
and, and it's that's what the happened. most desirable drive for most Americans is that coastline curving up the mm. all yep. those lakes, all, streams, yep. water supply. It's in the air. You're breathing it. Uh, don't live near a highway if you do move tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just one of the – list some of the uh, others we've yeah. got there, Justin. The, the distribution – now, every time they do a study, these numbers change slightly. Uh, but from what they found, and they found it at the lowest parts of the ocean and up to in glaciers, it's everywhere. Uh, but synthetic textiles make up 35% of the microplastics in the ocean by estimate. Uh, that is the clothing that you're wearing. Uh, any breakdown of uh, fishing nets, uh, similar things like that, that just naturally release these fibers and you can't see them. It's not like you're just throwing strings in the ocean and they're, that's what they're the tiniest particles uh, that still remain plastic. And it's just thicker than the width of a human hair. And what we're saying is when you have polyester clothes or 50% mm -hmm. cotton, 50% polyester, when you wash those, especially when they're new, they found up to 70,000 particles of microplastics go in the water. Per wash. They're flushed out per wash. And but you can't really see no. them. They're so small. But the buildup over time and getting into the water supply makes it the toxicity of everything that touches it. An another uh, way is storage containers. Oh, we love our Rubbermaid storage yep. containers. And all. I've gone to all glass. I got Pyrex. They do have the plastic top, but that does not touch the food. Do not heat food in plastic. Mm, that to-go container that... People just throw in the microwave. Yeah. And, and tell the people you do business with, paper containers. You, when they bring you a sandwich, if you, you, everybody I know, we just ordered yeah. to-go lunch and just since we're inside. Simple wax-coated. Well, this was just plain yeah, this paper. this was just paper. And this was Firehouse Subs. Give them a plug. They originated here in yeah. Jacksonville, the Sorensen brothers. Great guys. They're doing it the right way. Your restaurant can do it the right way. And probably one of the biggest polluters overall is single-use plastic yes. bags, and we get them everywhere. I mean, th there's so much work to be done, but we've talked about this, Justin. We have to get it at the source because to think we can recycle all, it's just overwhelming. Oh, yeah. You can't do it. In laundry, people don't really think, you know, you clean out that lint trap. Yeah. That is exactly what we're talking about but on a smaller scale going down the drain. Uh, everything is not just caught in the lint trap. You wash, it fills, it drains. Uh, and then your water uh, reclamation system has to deal with that. The filters are not small enough to get those microplastics out. And a lot of people don't know once that water's treated, if it's not potable, it's sent out into local waterways or to farming, which goes to irrigation and then back out into the waterways. And, of course, people say, well, what can I do? How can I do all this? Treat the water at the source you drink. There are a number of things you can do with the water coming into the house, water conditioners. Um, if you're going to buy water, treat it at the source, put it in a stainless steel water bottle. And we're going to talk about that, and we'll have links to all this. One of the solutions I found and I really love is a company called Rising Springs. I've got them right over top of the refrigerator with and a spout it's, it's using all the time. Uh, and it's but what makes the, it special? Yeah. It's from 2.2 miles within a mountain. It has not been exposed to the elements. Some of the purest water in the world you can find comes from the Sawtooth Mountains of Utah right here in this country. And it's bottled on site so they don't have to process it, move no. it, and then... And that's another thing. Yeah. People, well, this is pure water. It comes from this... Well, not if they send it two miles or three miles down the line. It gets impure by the time it well, gets Well, then they have to system. filter it at the other end. Yeah. So what have you accomplished? Yeah. And we'll put links in this episode and every episode we do. This may be, I don't know, a three, four-part series that we're going to do because it is so much information for you. So we're we're giving you an overview right here, and then we're going to deep dive into each subject. Uh, but those things that you can do, and, and some you will not be able to get away from. 
I know these little plastic sandwich bags and storage yeah. bags, but before we had them, talking about going back to the source and addressing it there, my mother put my sandwiches in wax paper because we didn't have plastic. The milk cartons, if we had milk cartons, were basically wax cardboard. The milk came in glass bottles. The soda pop was glass bottles and later cans. It's the plastic we have to get rid of, and we have to demand from the source, from the manufacturer, that they they do that. Well, I'll give you, uh, when we went over the distribution, I'll give you an idea of just how bad the problem is. Uh, synthetic textiles are the number one contributor, uh, followed up by car tires. Uh, city dust is 24%. So just natural, just that breakdown that occurs of all those products. Uh, that's the road markings make up 7%. Marine coatings, 37 Personal care products, 2%. And it's interesting, plastic pellets, 0.3%. Now that is actually what is designed to be microplastics. Only makes up 0.3% of the entire distribution. It's the stealth plastic, mm -hmm. the things you would not think would do it. Uh, and if you think of bottles in the ocean and all the plastic in the ocean. Trash Island? Trash Island. You, and we'll show a picture. Yeah. We're going to show a picture of Trash Island. Trash Island is depressing. It is depressing. But what happens, sunlight, heat, waves, salt water, eventually breaks down every bit of that into the And you see them on the beach. Go to the yeah. beach and you'll see this little piece or a bigger piece of plastic. Well, what happened to that? If you don't pick it up and throw it away, eventually it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and fish eat it and every animal eats it. And it's just a, a huge, huge problem. Yeah. So explaining what's on your screen, the plankton that are currently consuming these microplastics are not hunting out plastics. Uh, plankton eats as well. And what the plankton eats uh, those little microbes attach to the plastic like a nice floating hotel. The plankton then sees the plastic, and it's like a buffet. They just, they're like, they're all right here, and they swallow the plastic, and then that starts moving up the food chain. It's in their digestive system. And devein your shrimp, by the oh. way, because shrimp are full of microplastics. Well, they're filter feeders. Yeah, they are. They're bottom yeah. feeders. They're filter feeders. Catfish, can you imagine? Mm. Full of microplastics. So definitely, you must clean them. The camera. So Jim, what are the ramifications of people consuming microplastics? I know some of the studies are still out, but they have a pretty good guess as to how plastic does affect us. Yeah, there are. They can't conclusively say because it's such a new field and they don't have any long-term studies, but they can pretty much give you a general idea that uh, every bite of food you take and every sip of water, you're almost certainly taking in microplastics. In the air you breathe. In the air you breathe. So we're becoming microplastic hosts. Yes. It's what we are. And uh, the way they believe it's affecting us and will affect us much more greatly are the chemicals linked to these plastics and the effects on the in creating health problems such as reproductive harm, adding to obesity, organ problems, and developmental delays in children. That's just scratching the surface. surface. We have no idea what yeah. it's really going to do is, to our bodies. I really think most of it leads back when we harm our bodies, when we overeat, when we don't exercise. It's our immune system that gets destroyed and our ability to fight disease and illness, as well, we've seen with COVID-19. Yeah. If it's fighting that, it's not fighting something else. Yeah. If you're if you're eating plastic, that's definitely a foreign object. Well, and there's a scientific study, and they now found that every day, one in five of your cells develop cancer, but your body fights it all. So think about that. And if it's busy yeah. fighting all the microplastics. You don't have much of a chance, or you stay in just diminished health. And so the next thing that comes along, you get sick and you get sicker. So it, it's a, a terrifying thing when you really think about 
the amount of plastic already out there, the population growth we have yeah. and are having, and how much more plastic is going to enter the environment. And people say, well, we're recycling. There's been 8 billion tons of plastic produced since 1950 and less than 10% recycled. So recycling's not the problem no. of, oh, man, that's going to fix the problem because it's such a small amount. Now, if you do it at home, you think everybody's doing it. Most people aren't doing it. And then even the collection of the recycling you got the tire dust from the trucks. You got the fuel it's burning. You got the carbon footprint, as we say. A lot of cities are shutting down their programs. Yes. For it's just not cost efficient no. and people aren't doing it. So again, we must go back to the source. It's when talk about drink good water, drink rising springs, drink get as pure as you can. Buy more natural fibers when possible. Yeah. I, I try to buy either bamboo or cotton shirts and slacks, and I've thrown away so much polyester. Um, but uh, that's you've got to do those yeah. things to protect yourself. Well, and if your city doesn't have a recycling program, it does need to be a priority, and, and you do need to make some noise uh, where you can. Um, a lot of people don't understand what when they recycle, what happens to that material. And for years, uh, the same cargo ships that were bringing us all of our goods were being filled after they were emptied with our garbage, and then they were sent back overseas to be processed. It was cheaper for them to process all of our garbage than for us to process it ourselves. India, China, yeah. mainly China. They don't want our garbage anymore. I think we've sent them about enough, and they have no desire to fill those ships and bring them back with garbage. And the cities are making the decision that since they can't ship it overseas, they, it's not cost effective to do recycling here. So they're just stopping some of those programs. Um, and and they're the, burying most of them in landfills, yeah. which eventually will leach down into the aquifers and on and on again. Another problem with China, I believe it was China, if I'm wrong, um, there was an investigative report and they started following these ships and what happened. Yeah, they unloaded them. Then they went to the other end of an island and they dumped them back in the ocean. Just cargo ships full. And cruise ships used to be the worst. Yeah. Just and dumping just dump their everything waste. in the ocean. Yeah. yeah. So you can't police the globe. And this is why I say it must be at the source. It must not be produced. No gallon containers and plastic. Now, and you'll never get rid of all plastic. No. Some things you have to have in those containers, some solvent, some things that you just can't put in. It's not cost effective to put in glass and not a good idea to have a solvent that breaks and goes everywhere. Yeah. So well, there's there certain things. The promise of plastic, I understand. I get why when it was manufactured, we said, oh, my God, this is incredible. Yeah. All these synthetic fibers, they wick moisture away. They last longer. But you don't get anything for free. No. It's like Ben in The Graduate when he put his arm around and he said, remember one word, plastics. Yeah. And at that time, that was it. Yeah. That's where everything was going. Yeah. And it went that way. Yeah. We're, we're living the ramifications of that. But we must take it out of the environment to the greatest degree we can. And that's what we're talking about. We don't want it in our bodies. You don't want it in your body. And it's one of those things that are stealth that you really don't see when you wash your clothes or when you drink water and you drink a bottle of water and you say well i don't see anything yeah. in it that's how small it is and every single water bottle tested that that blew my mind yeah that it wasn't just in some brand that's pulling tap water and filtering it it's all of them um and i i made a joke uh recently i was at a gas station and uh there was no employees at this gas station apparently no one wanted to work that day um but they had all their crates of water sitting out front of the gas station, baking in the sun. And right in the <laughs> noon heat, just cooking. There you go. And you buy that and you think, okay, great. I'll take it home, refrigerate it. It's already off-gassed. There's guaranteed microplastics inside from the day it left the factory before it sat and baked. And that heat and was breaking it down yeah. as you looked at it. 
Yes, uh, that is not a, mm. a good thing to buy. No. I would not do that, but people did buy it. And stop drinking your car water after it sat for... Yeah, don't don't reuse plastic bottles, please. And I I used to uh, manage a gym, and people would get the same yeah. water bottle. Refill They'd fill it, it for months yep. till it got so soft. Oh. And then thinking, you know, is that breaking down? Yeah. Well, now I know it was. Yeah. Don't do that. Uh, I mentioned Rising Springs a few times, and I do want to mention to people that we have a very good interview, which you did. Jim, yeah. I was lucky enough to speak to an expert on the subject of water quality and forever chemicals, and she taught me things that will lead me down many rabbit holes of, of yeah. knowledge. Good. The Hoya hiked. Yes. Uh, she's with Rising Springs. Uh, has made water her life, really. Uh, water filtration systems, water reclamation in um, cities. Uh, but she taught the interviews going to be really soon. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was incredible. Good. The, the water systems are at least being looked after by someone I know cares about it. And uh, you guys definitely watch the interview. Uh, we'll have a link down in the description so you can find it uh, once it's released. But she is from Rising Springs and made it apparent that it's not just another water company. It's not someone just bottling water. It, it's what makes Rising Springs unique. And mentioning people who are looking after water in every city, probably they're river keepers or yes. ocean keepers or people who are dedicated to protecting the environment and making sure the water is as pure as it can be. And we could do one whole show on who's oh, polluting yeah. the ocean and polluting our rivers. But we, we have to stick to microplastics right now because that's what we want to talk about. And speaking of those, there's another little tidbit for you. Americans ingest at least 74,000 microplastic particles each year. And that's why they came up five grams a week roughly the equivalent of a credit card. And that's from this issue of yes. Consumer Report, June 2020. It said, and here's something, how does another reason it affects health? There is evidence, at least in animals, and by the way, we are animals. We like to forget that. Yes, uh, that microplastics can cross the hardy membrane, protecting the brain, from many foreign bodies that get into the bloodstream. And there's some evidence that mothers may be able to pass microplastics through their placenta to a developing fetus, according to research from Rutgers Center for Urban Environmental Sustainability. It's just so small. Go right to the baby. It can slip right through the cells. Yes, scary stuff, very scary stuff. And it it's it's easy to forget that it affects us all. When, and here we have a clip with Nikoya from Rising Springs. Uh, she'll be going over what makes Rising Springs so special, but we'll include a link down in the description to the full interview uh, once that's released. Rising Springs is bottled out of a source in Pine, Idaho, about an hour and a half outside of Boise, Idaho, at the base of the Sawtooth Mountains. Um, the sawtooths are in the largest contiguous wildlands in the United States, so the source is incredibly protected. Um, the water itself rises from an aquifer from 2.2 miles deep, making it the deepest source in the United States. And it's protected by this granite batholith, which is the largest granite batholith in the world. Um, the water itself fell as rain or snow about 16 feet thousand years ago, so it fell before any type of environmental or man-made contamination. So it's never come in contact with our modern day world. As the water rises, it comes up through two miles of quartz crystal, so it picks up the silica out of the quartz um, on its journey to the surface. It also comes out at a pH of 9.4, so it's got a high alkalinity. And um, the water is pure to parts per quadrillion, which is the smallest um, particle we could test down to, free of, like I said, any type of modern day contamination, including the plastics um, that you are discussing. Yeah, so that journey we were speaking to, I, it took us about a year to really dive into packaging. And when we first, you know, had decided, yes, we did want to relaunch the brand, we had assumed we would go into glass. And we knew we were going to be a direct-to-consumer company. 
Um, when we started researching glass, it was clear that, you know, the carbon footprint was much higher than we had realized. And, um, you know, just from the production and the transportation to the recycling, um, you know, it had a high impact. And so we really, we were hopeful for a lot of, you know, new technologies, plant-based plastics, all these different, you know, things we had kind of heard about. And we researched all of them and none of them were viable for the product at this time. And um, we hope that they will be soon. But we, when we saw the bag and box technology that we most of us are familiar with wine coming in yeah. a box, um, and we started researching that, it, you know, the, such a low carbon footprint for the volume of water that we're transporting. And so that seemed to be, that was a great idea. We did know that we needed to um, offer and support a way to upcycle the plastic liner that's inside, which is a lot less, significantly less plastic than you would have if you had that in single serve. And it's, um, you know, the BPA, BPF, BPS free. And we test for, for a leakage. So we test all of our um, batches and we let them sit, I think, you know, from a year ago or however long, I'm not super great on <laughs> those numbers, but, you know, we test for any phthalate leakage into the, into the water. It's ne there's never been any, which makes us feel really good. So then it's about, you know, so we feel like the consumer is, is well cared for. So what do we do with the plastic um, to, to be responsible? And we first thought that 3D printing would be an amazing option. And we did, you know, we sent the plastic off and yes, there is the ability to do that, but we would have to just gather tons of yeah. plastic bags and we're just not that big of a company uh -huh. right now. So we found a company in Boise, which will upcycle every part of the bag, the spout, even the little tag that you pull off the safety seal into synthetic diesel. And so for now that seems like the best um, upcycling option we have. We stay, you know, very involved in what our options are and are, are very conscious of, um, of our, and remain, remain flexible with our ability to pivot if needed, you know? And so when there's other options available, we will look into those. So 92% of public water supplies in the tap water uh, test positive, 93% of bottled uh, water tested positive, and those are the chemicals that we actually have identified to test. So that makes things... And we know, and we won't get into it right now, but you can watch Dark Waters if you want yes. a, a, a nice movie to watch uh, to, to enlighten you. It may depress you. But Dark Waters. You need to know is, it, though. You need to know it. Watch, watch that movie, Dark Waters. Yeah, when we start pulling back the veil on how this has come into our lives, and I believe no one started off, no company, no individual, with the intention no. of harming anyone. No. Microplastics, the way they've come into our life, the intention was easy to carry, easy to make, cheaper. And actually, environmentalists pushed it because they wanted to save the trees. No paper bags at the grocery store. Don't do all this paper everywhere is terrible. And the promise of recycling, yes. being able and to con continually reuse it. Well, as we say, the chain has broken. Yeah. We're better off to go back. And now we're doing much better with forest, replanting them, them growing. And what I like to point out about timber and forest, so, oh, we have so fewer trees than we ever have. No, we haven't. You, people never take into account linear foot of trees. For the last hundred years that we've been around doing this, they've been growing up too, not just out. So they're much more dis density and lumber than you think. Not that we should mass tear, you know, clear cut everything, yeah. but it's sustainable and we can do this. Uh, and they help us breathe. So we do have to look out yes. for them. <laughs> And if we're going to recycle, what's easier than paper to recycle? Yeah, so. Yeah, breaking down the paper is, the promise of microplastics is it's difficult to break down. It lasts forever. Uh, that was the, that was the ploy. That was the sell. But the problem is it does. It does exactly what they say it will do. It does. It, it will outlive the container. It'll outlive the product. Um, you don't need milk that spoils in 14 days 
to be held in a container that lasts for 3,000 years. Or however long it yes. lasts. Yeah, you know, who knows if you're a really perfect environment, yeah. how long a piece of plastic would last. Um, but if we don't, again, I'll go back to if we don't attack it at the source, it's not going to make any yeah. difference. It has to be done there. If you like what you're hearing, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel because we do more than water. We do a lot of things from un covering military secrets to investigative reporting in our government, which I've been doing for about 40 years. And if you have any ideas for a future episode, please do contact us at contact at hackingthetruth.com, and uh, we'll be able to email you back and hopefully open up a dialogue and see what you'd like us to investigate. And we'll do it. We are mobile now. Yes. <laughs> we want to be mobile. We've been in this uh, studio far too long with COVID-19. Yeah, COVID threw we, a wrench in everything. How many, uh, I don't know how many people we've got lined up to interview, but it's a lot. Yes. So we have a couple years work by the time we start getting to them, which is a good thing. Yes. And we love remote interviews, but it's so much nicer to sit across from someone, sit next to someone at a table and really engage with them and, and learn from them. Yes. Very much so. Uh, you know, Justin, talking about, you know, some things you can do to minimize the problem, and one of them is vacuum your home. Minimize household dust, because we're talking about off-gassing, but everything you touch, the plastic, is wearing down. One of the biggest culprits is your carpet. Years ago, when I was growing up, in the Stone Age. Most carpets were wool. They were natural fibers. Now most of them are po some type or all polyesters. And when you walk on those, what happens? It goes into the air. You breathe it. You roll around on the carpet with your dog, with your children. You're breathing. So vacuum your carpets. And we've asked for the synthetics. It's not that yes. the manufacturers have just decided to give us something that we don't want. We asked for carpet to either outlast us, outlast the home, or the stain resistance. They'll spray it with products, which are plastics. Not good. No. And aerosol particles is a real problem also because anything with aerosol, anything to do with chemicals, has microplastics in it, even much smaller than the five microns. And... You know, when I when I say go to the source, yes, you have to write letters. You're going to have to be proactive. There's got to be a call to action because if you wait for everybody else to do it, it's not going to happen. No. We're sending links to this to newspapers, to editorials, to anyone that has anything to do with the, the ocean. Water Alliance, John Philippe Cousteau, yeah. Surfer Magazine. These people need to watch the show, see what they can do, look at the links we provide, and take action. Now, if you're waiting for your politician to do it, uh, a politician is a person who cuts down a tree, stands on its stump, and gives you a talk about conservation. So I don't have a lot of faith in the politicians. We have to act. No. But you can pressure them. If they're scared about mm -hmm. not being elected, then they will do something. Yeah. But the quickest way to get them to act. Yes. Threaten their funding. <laughs> yes. And they are heavily funded by chemical companies. So and the plastic manufacturers and the people who don't want to change. But I will say change can be brought about if you watch the Jane Goodall documentary they did. And Conoco, who was a big evil in their community, she sat down. She says, no, we're not going to protest. We're not going to do. So she was able to sit down with the president and the board of directors, explain her position, and they started seeing things her way. No yelling, no screaming, no threats. Just clearly stating your position and your goals. Yes, and it happened. Well, most communities, I know Jacksonville is uh, Jacksonville has these, you will find local cleanups in your area. If you do want to take part, if you do want to help, please go online. Uh, you will find 
a local cleanup in your area some weekend, go out, give them a few hours of your time, it will make a difference. The problem's so big, it might seem overwhelming, but even a little part helps. And we have crews, uh, especially after the 4th of July fireworks, mm-hmm. or you come to the beach, and there, and there are literally hundreds of people that volunteer to clean the beach up. So it can be done. Yes. And Jim, as we were going through microplastics, we really wanted to offer people some solution other than just panic and terror. Uh, You came across some really nice options other than Rising Springs, which is the primo water. Uh, But what all have you come up with uh, for solutions for every day? Well, we talked about going to the source and treating your water at the source. And the source being when it comes into your house, number one, we're going to talk about water today. And I've been in the water business for over 40 years. And I've always said, you know, well, in Florida, we have a lot of uh, dissolved minerals in the water, so water conditioners are pretty prominent. Uh, Formerly, I had a whole house charcoal filter to filter out all the impurities. Of course, during this time, I knew nothing about microplastics and how much they were in the environment. But I have a couple of solutions here, or we have a couple of solutions we can offer Uh, My first choice is Rising Springs, and I say that because it's the purest water we found. And you saw in our segment a small interview, and we have a much larger interview we're going to play later. But when it is right out of the mountain, 2.2 miles deep, and I drank at least two full glasses every morning, flush the system, be healthy, great thing. And just what do you take your water in? And we'll talk about the different bottles, but they have a great package. And here's a Rising Springs canister here, stainless steel, no plastic, any plastic, and this is great. And also, I believe there's a discount for this is if they order. Yes, there's uh, subscription services and single services, but we have uh, an affiliate link down in the description where you'll be able to get a little bit better deal than just the general public uh, on either shipping or the product itself. So just check the link in the description and you'll be able to access that. And there's another product that we use quite a bit and it's a countertop uh, filtering system. And I'll just grab this box. And this system is great. I, yeah, it is. It's uh, it's an Apex system. Now, you can go to their website. We have a link below and look at the different kind of filtering systems. I have this on my kitchen sink in there, and it hooks right up, and you just turn the knob, and the water comes out. But this actually balances the alkalinity of the water, and it is about a six-process filtering system. I highly recommend it. I use it. And there are a lot of them out there you can shop, but at least take a look at this one and see what you think. So there are two solutions. I use them both. Um, What impressed me about this is I had a water filter that I installed years ago in an apartment, and the waste was incredible. You would lose about two gallons of water for every gallon that it was processing. This seemingly has little to no waste, um, and I think the water tastes better. Uh, than the oh yeah the you're system going through a carbon filter this actually does filter microplastics so this is a great filter to have and you say well why don't you just use rising springs all the time well I don't want to put it in my coffee maker yeah, yeah we make a lot of coffee we do here but so these are two products that can definitely protect your health and your family's health just some of the small things not small things anymore so, uh, I firmly believe what you should be doing. Well, and this was a very simple install, correct? Yeah, very. I mean, it was, you just screwed it into the actual, um, the nozzle head. Yeah. Couldn't have been easier. I had to go under my sink and redo piping, and it was quite a nightmare. This is worlds ahead. And we are going to put up a link to everything you'll see below. And also, uh, I bought a shower, a new shower head that has a filtering system in it that is one of the best I've ever used, and we'll put up a, a link to that also. Well, I haven't told you about that. I told you I no. was going to try it out, and it's great. Well, a lot of people forget that when you're in a hot, steamy shower, all the water that's in that shower is just aerosolized. So if there's plastic in that water, you're now breathing it um, as well as showering in it. Yes, you are. 
And let's also, here's another type water container, stainless steel, large mouth. Uh, I have several. I use them both because I keep one in the refrigerator ready to go when I head out the door because I want the water cold, especially here in Florida when today I think it's 94 degrees with a 97% uh. humidity. <clears throat> Uh, and this is a nice one also. This would be, these would be our two recommendations, yeah. and it's a Takaya or Takia, and it's double line, doesn't sweat. You can put hot or cold in it, and both of them are that way. So these are some of the simple solutions you can do to avoid your exposure to microplastics, and health-wise, it is imperative that you do this. And it's good that everyone can't subscribe necessarily to a water service like that, but a filter like that will get you as close as you can come yes. to something like that subscription service. And it's, you can replace the filter constantly as, as necessary. I believe it's a six month to a year, depending on, on how many people and yes. how many gallons um, you can do that. But something has to be done. You can't just turn your back and and say, uh, it doesn't affect me. It affects you. No, it affects you. And uh, w with any kind of filtration, I sold them for many, many years. You can do a whole house system. Uh, part of the problems with whole house, you're treating water that comes into your toilet. So you're paying a lot of money uh, that you things, wash dishes yeah. with, that you wash your hands with. You really want to treat it at the source you're drinking it uh, under the counter, put in the unit. This goes under the counter, and they have several, several options. Uh, of course, if you can't do any of those, buy as much rising springs as yes. you can and get pure water. Just get a good Bottle source. Bottle water has left my life. I do not use, I've got it for emergencies yes. if there's a hurricane, but I do not carry any plastic bottled water anymore. And it was amazing how quick that transition happened once we started researching microplastics. I, I was probably holding a bottle of water when we came across the research for bottles of water that have plastic, and you just put it down, and uh, it, it takes time. There are adjustments you have to make, but it's in your it's in your best interests. And there is another product that a close friend of mine got. She wanted a pitcher like a Brita, and you know those mm -hmm. kind. Well, this one's called Clearly Filtered, and. I did some research, and I found out this one actually does filter out microplastics. Believe me, not all of them do. Obviously, if that's what you're using and you're happy with it, it's better than nothing. You're yes. not getting chlorine and chemicals and a number of things. And this is clearly filtered water pitcher. And we'll also have a little thing there. You can check on it at the bottom of the screen. And when the manufacturer, uh, when you should change the filter, please do. Yes. Please do. I, I have been to more people's houses where you pull that filter out and immediately regret drinking the water. Uh, yeah. Real it can simple only do solution. so much. Yes. If you uh, have, I have one of the old fashioned calendars in my kitchen and I write everything yep. on it. That I tried doing the phone. It didn't work for me. I'm too old school. But you look at that date and it says change filter. I know what that means. I yell at Siri to remind me in six months. And uh, then she beeps <laughs> and I don't know why she's reminding me of something. But these are just a few of the things. And we will be doing an on. This will be an ongoing series of microplastics. Because in the years to come, the effects of microplastics, I think, will be one, if not the biggest story about our environment, of what we can do right now for our health. Yeah, the planet may be warming, but right now you need to take care of your body, your family, your children. Because remember, you're very eating a credit card's worth of plastic every week. Wow. Just and that's food, not a water. low interest rate either. Oh, you're paying a high interest yes. rate on that one. <laughs> you really are. Well, thanks for being with us. I hope this is helpful. Let us know. Please subscribe to our channel and tell all your friends and healthcare workers about what's going on. Thank you for being with us.